than 12 valuable tax benefits of real estate investing. Now, why is this important? Well, there's a lot of mistakes that people make when it comes to real estate, but one of the key mistakes is really not having the education around it and understanding the tax code because the tax code favors real estate investment. Why do you think the Forbes 400 list is comprised of many, many, many different real estate magnets? So I want you to understand this so you can apply it in your wealth planning going forward. Now, the first benefit that I want to dive into doesn't even need to deal with uh, being a true real estate investor. It's just understanding how things work and understanding the tax code. So there's a personal residence tax e exclusion that provides for tax savings based on the gains of your property. So if your property appreciates $250,000 or $500,000 and you sell it as an individual, you will not pay tax on that $250,000 gain or as a married couple by $500,000 gain. So as long as you've lived in the home for two out of the past five years, it allows you to avoid paying taxes on the appreciation of your property. That's pretty powerful. They're giving you a free pass and they're incentivizing home ownership. Now, going along those lines, the second tax benefit that I want to share with you, and you don't even need to be a real estate investor, deals with the fact that you can rent your home out for two weeks or less, 14 days per year, and all of the income that you generate from your home is tax-free. What other income stream that you have is completely tax-free? Well, this is one of them. Think about it this strategically. Let's say you go on your, a vacation. Your home is not being used. You could rent that out just like you're renting out a hotel room or renting out an Airbnb or VRBO. Do that yourself. Put the money in your pocket tax-free. Generate an extra couple thousand dollars, five thousand, six thousand dollars per year. And we've even had people do this strategically when there's major events happening in your city, whether it's Coachella and Palm Springs or the Palm Desert area or the Super Bowl coming to town, this can be a valuable time to move out of your place for a short period of time and generate some tax-free income. Now let's move on to being a real estate investor and putting the real estate investor hat on. The third valuable tax benefit that I want to talk about is depreciation. The IRS provides useful lives on certain assets. So if you own a home, the useful life is 27 and a half years. A commercial building is 39 years. So what it does is, is that the IRS allows you to take a depreciation expense on your tax return, which then says that there's a fictitious expense on your tax return based on the depreciation in the tax code. So you could be generating income from your rental property or your real estate investment. Meanwhile, on your tax return, you might show a loss. So all of the income that shows up to you is then tax-free or potentially even generating refunds because of the way that the depreciation expense works. So there is a recapture provision that the IRS has when you go to sell the property, but that can be avoided when we go down to some of the other valuable benefits that we'll talk about in a couple minutes. Very important. Another you know, real estate tax benefit, number four, is having the real estate professional status. There's something called the passive activity loss limitation rule. Which basically means that if you earn $150,000 per year, any investment losses from passive activities cannot be claimed on your tax return. So if you are able to basically get the real estate professional status, this will allow you to take those deductions against other income that you may generate in the current year. So if you just own real estate passively, you might not be able to duck the losses that depreciation creates. But we have people who are in the real estate industry, whether they're brokers, mortgage professionals, um, commercial tenants, commercial reps, you might be able to qualify for this. Or if a spouse doesn't necessarily work, they could go out and get their license and help manage your real estate portfolio. You could begin to claim the real estate professional status and any losses created from a tax basis can now offset other incomes from other properties or other earning streams such as employment income. Very, very important to know, especially for those in high tax brackets. Now, number five, is that any rental income or real estate income, you're not subject to payroll taxes. So unlike a job or if you own your own business, you'll be paying 7.65% in payroll taxes for Social Security and Medicare. And for self, those self-employed, it's essentially 15.3%. So it, it's a decent amount of money that can be you know, eliminated by having additional rental income streams. $100,000 of wage income is gonna be 7.65% of payroll taxes. Rental income does not have that same thing. So it's not huge, but eliminates some of the tax friction from other employment sources. Now, number six, 
When investing in real estate, for many people, it's a long-term gain to allow the property to appreciate your mortgage to get paid down. That appreciation over the long term is tax deferred. You don't pay taxes as your property appreciates. Unlike certain mutual funds that pass along capital gains distributions, real estate doesn't until you go to sell. And even when you do go to sell, there's ways to avoid some of the uh, capital gains that we'll talk about in the next minute or two. So very powerful. Now, number seven on the list is long-term capital gains rates. When you do go to sell your property, you're not paying ordinary income tax rates. You're paying capital gains rates. And capital gains rates are lower than ordinary income rates, such as your wages and any self-employment business income. So that's powerful. You might be paying the, the capital gains rates are 0 to 20%, whereas ordinary income tax rates are up to 39.6% federally. So this can be a good tool to know that any long-term appreciation when you go to sell is less than any typical wage income. Another powerful benefit of real estate. And so for those of you that want to take things to the next level and not pay taxes when you sell, there's a trick or a rule called a 1031 exchange. It's basically a method for you to sell your property while following strict IRS guidelines that allows you to identify a new investment property within a specified time window and apply the proceeds from your sale, including the gain, towards the new property. And you will not be paying taxes on the gain from the previous sale. So it allows you to continue to compound your money. If you eliminate $50,000 of taxes and defer it into the future, that continuing to grow at 20, that 8% over the next 20, 25 years turns 50000 into several hundred thousand dollars. So it's really powerful, and having a higher equity base in a new property may allow you to generate more rental income. So a lot of investors look to use 1031 exchanges to continue to grow and compound their wealth at a quicker rate. So in the event that we're not trying to sell our property but get equity out in a tax-free manner, we can do something known as a tax-free refinancing. Now what this does, it allows you to cash out some of the equity in your home. Let's say I purchased a, a rental property for 500,000 and now it's worth a million. Well, I can refinance that property, pull out $100,000 of the equity and put that in my pocket without having to pay taxes on it. It's pretty powerful and astute real estate investors do this from time to time when the opportunities present. Now, we don't necessarily want to leverage up the property, but as long as there's a cash flow buffer, it's done conservatively financed, and our cash flow continues to support the higher interest expense, it could bode very well for you to continue to grow and compound your wealth. So another very valuable tool for astute real estate investors. Now, number 10 is a little bit morbid, but when you pass away, the heirs who inherit your real estate investments get a step up in basis. So if that property grew from 500,000 to a million, there's a $500,000 gain. Well, if those heirs sell it immediately upon inheriting it, they will basically realize all of the proceeds tax-free. They don't need to pay capital gains tax on that appreciation. So very, very strong, very, very powerful, and that's why a lot of investors in real estate choose to die with it because there's, their heirs will not pay taxes unless there's an estate tax threshold, and that's a whole other conversation. So number 11 on this list is being able to use your IRA to invest in real estate strategically. Wall Street has convinced people to buy the products that they're out there and able to sell. But what's important to know is that there's alternative custodians that allow you to invest in these non-traditional investments such as real estate, such as limited partnerships in real estate, such as first trust deeds and second trust deeds. And now why you'd want to do this is because it allows you to invest in perhaps a tax inefficient investment like a first trust deed and shield taxes by having it in this tax deferred account. So it can be very powerful. And at the end of the day, when we're investing, we want to generate the highest after tax return. So you can use these accounts to put the right assets in the right portfolio or in the right account. And number 12 is installment sales. So basically, if you go to sell that property that I had a five $500,000 gain on, that might push me up into a very high tax bracket. I could then come into a contract with a buyer that says he's going to pay me out over a number of years. That will allow me to realize my profit on an installment in successive years, which may not push me into higher tax brackets and provide for an income stream over a period of time. It's not necessarily for everyone, but it does allow you to manage your tax brackets more effectively and minimize 
taxes. So there you have it. There's 12 valuable tax benefits of real estate investing. You need to have the knowledge to be able to create the right wealth building and wealth creation plan. And I appreciate you taking the time to listen to this. If you have any questions, email me. I look forward to hearing about how you're making your plans to build wealth and live a wonderful life. Look forward to talking to you in the next part of this series. Be well. Bye.